It's a blessed day. Once again, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we love to thank the Lord for this opportunity that we have come together to listen to his word once more. I need us here in this beautiful day to read from the book of Exodus chapter 14, and we are reading verse number 14, and also we are reading in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 15. The Bible reads in Exodus 14 and verse 14, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 15, the Bible reads, And he said, Listen, all you Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you King Jehoshaphat, that says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude for the battle is not yours but God's may the Lord bless the reading of his word and may also bless the interpretation and the revelation of his word allow me in this day to minister and speak on the title no fight but still win no fight but still win. From the scripture that we have just read, the Bible says, during the time of Moses, when they were to cross over the sea, and people looked behind them, and they saw the Egyptians that were following them, and they were in great fear. And the Lord said to Moses, tell the people not to fear, but tell the people, to have peace. Tell them to be silent for I will fight for them. So in the other scripture the Bible says the battle is not yours. The battle is God's. No fight but still win. I've come to preach a message here today that I need you to understand that it is not given that you need to fight in order to win. We are a generation of people that are actually born fighters. Even the day that you are born, you are born with your fist folded and you are born crying to resemble that you are coming into the world, the world that has Christ and the world that has all men that will fight. Many will always say you God holding something in your hands which will be revealed with time and as time passes by but on the other hand hands and fists that are folded it means you are a fighter so people are actually born fighters and people can always hate you if you try to stop them from fighting we are taught to fight from time to time we are taught to fight from day to day and every occasion and every moment people are always at fight people will always say i'm a fighter we fight in the house i'll fight outside i'll fight in the rooftop i'll fight everywhere i'll fight for my success so it is something that which is within people people have already said to themselves and convinced themselves that in order to succeed, in order to make it, in order to conquer, in order to become great, I therefore must be a fighter. But I've come to say, in the contrary, you don't need to be a fighter in order to win. You can win without fighting. As the Bible says, do not fight this battle because the battle is not yours. The battle is of the Lord. People have been bruised in their lives. We living with people from day to day that already had been bruised. People have been bruised emotionally. People have been bruised psychologically. People have been bruised physically. People are full of scars, bruised financially. On every area of people's lives, their lives have been characterized by all manner of bruises. Because you have been told in your life, you must fight. And you also fight the battles that you ought not to fight because you have been told for you to make it, 
rise up and be a fighter. And I have come to say, you can actually stand, be still, and still be victorious. According to the word of God, what he told the Israelites, he says you will only hold your peace. Because the battle is not yours. The battle is mine. That means you can reach a state and a situation in your life when you have to be silent. There are times and seasons in our lives where our speeches, our talks, no matter how intellectual we are, could not be of any help. But we need to hold our peace and be silent within ourselves and to tell ourselves that this battle is not mine. How many battles have you fought in your life which actually you ought to have been silent but you stood and said, I must fight lest this situation remain the same. The Lord says the battle is God's. But the greatest question is, how can God be in a position when he fights for you? I will speak only a few things on how God can be engaged in fighting for you. Number one, you must hang on the faithfulness of God. That is a prerequisite in your life. When you read in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse number 13, the Bible says there is no temptation that has overtaken you than such as is common to man. And in every temptation, God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. And in every temptation, the Lord will also make a way of escape. A way of escape that is God fighting for you. And the Bible furthermore says, He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can carry. And I need you to understand, my friend, whatever you are going through, it's bearable, it's carryable. If it comes to me, it first went through God. So the devil has got no access in your life when you trust upon the Lord except through him. He cannot do as he wish. That is the heritage, is the inheritance of those who trust, of those who believe upon the Lord. That's why even when he went to Job, he could not be able to bring any kind of a burden before Job. The Lord said, do whatever you desire, but do not touch his life. So every temptation, the Bible says God is faithful. The faithfulness of God is the faithfulness of God that fights for us. God is already on our side, is already on our defense. He is already on to fight all our battles. Relax and know when you trust upon him that Lord, I know you are faithful. I can hang on your faithfulness. If I can't do anything about this situation, I can only hang on your faithfulness. You wouldn't allow me to be, ten to be tempted beyond what I am capable. And I thank you because I know that in every temptation you always make a way. In that temptation there is a way. In that battle there is a way. There is no reason to say it was impossible. I was caught off guard. There was nothing I can do about it. The problem is not God, then the problem is you. Because in everything that you do, the Lord says, there is a way. He cannot allow you to be tempted beyond what you can be able to handle. You can handle what you are going through. You can handle those problems. You can handle that situation. You can handle everything that has happened. You cannot tell your friend if it came to you. Yes, the reason why it couldn't come to your friend is because your friend has got no capacity to be able to withstand it. The reason it came to you is because the Lord had weighed it and found it that you will be able to overcome under such circumstances because the battle is not yours. The faithfulness of God is what you can hang on. Hence, you can win without fighting in your life. And secondly, you must be led by God. This is one of the most important things as well. When you read in the word of God, 
in Deuteronomy 1 and verse number 30. The Bible says, for those that the Lord leads, the Lord says, I will go before you. To go before you means to lead you. He says, when I go before you, I go before you and fight for you. He is not only God, but he is the God who goes before us. If he goes before us, it means the Lord is leading you. Allow yourself to be led. When you are led by God, he fights all your battles. Because God is ahead of you. The God who sees tomorrow. The God who knows what will be the outcome of tomorrow. As it is written in the Bible, 365 times, that fear not. The Lord is saying, do not fear tomorrow because I'm already in your tomorrow. Do not fear next week because I am already in your next week. God is the God who paves a way for us. Nothing doable that God cannot do. He is the God who fights our battles. We only need to allow him to lead us because he goes before us. As Jesus says, when you pray in what we call the Lord's Prayer, but actually it is not the Lord's Prayer because Jesus never prays this prayer. It is became the disciples' prayer. He says, when you pray, says in Matthew 6 and 13, Lord, lead us not into temptation. It means God remains your leader who will not lead you into temptation, but to deliver you from every evil. God desires to lead you. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 24, when David was fighting the Philistines, he asked God, inquired of him, Lord, must I pursue them? Must I go after them? Will I overtake them? And the Lord said to David, no, 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 wait until you hear my footsteps on the mulberry trees. The moment you hear the footsteps, then you know that I've gone before you. Now you can go over. You will be able to overcome. I will destroy them for you. It is not about you. It's about being led by God. And God fighting your battles. He is the God who fights our battles. Then we become winners. How wonderful it is. You can win without a fight. No fight, but still win in our lives. And number last for today, you need to submit to God and resist the devil. That is how you don't need to fight, but you still win. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee away from you. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee away from you. You don't resist him. You must first submit. Submission, it means, Lord, guide me. Lead me. It means, send me. Direct my steps. When you are submitted, it means I am under your guidance. I'm under your authority. When you are under the authority of God, the Bible says you have the power to resist the devil and then he will flee away from you. How many people are trying to resist the devil? But they are outside of the submission under God. If you are not submitting to God, no matter how much you resist the devil, the devil is not listening to you. Many times we had told people, some we have lied to them saying, as long as you call upon the name of the Lord, all things are possible. No, God does not answer every prayer. But he only hears the prayer of those who are submitted under his authority, under his guidance, under his will. He does not answer any prayer. That is the reason why in Acts 19, when you read in verse 15, you will hear the sons of Sceva who came and began to cast out spirits. They said, we are casting you in the name of Jesus, whom we have heard Paul preaching about, casting about. It is not about the name of Jesus. If I had to tell you, I will tell you that the name of Jesus will be the most useless name depending on who uses it. It's not about the name. But it's about he that uses that name. They saw Paul performing miracles, signs and wonders using the name of Jesus. 
But when he commanded, they commanded demons to leave. Demons said, no. Paul we know. Jesus we know. But who are you? It means we do not know you. But the person you are talking about, because they saw under the authority and the content and the source called Paul, using the name of Jesus, things and miracles would happen. It's not about the name of Jesus. It's about who uses the name of Jesus. You cannot be without Christ and use the name of Jesus and expect miracles and anything to happen upon your life. That will become the most powerful name that we have ever spoken about. You need Jesus in your life first. Then you can be able to use the name. You need to be submitted under the authority. Then you let God fight your battles. The Bible says in those days of Apostle Paul, even a handkerchief will perform miracles, cast out demons. The sick will touch it and they will be healed. Through the shades, the people will be healed. It is in the name of Jesus, through people who submitted under his authority, it makes God to fight all the battles. My prayer for you here today is to understand that you don't need to fight every battle. You do not need to stand and say, I must fight it out. I must stand my ground. I must move forward. I must make the difference. It's not on all those. You can win without fighting. You can have the victory without any fight in your life. The Lord says, the battle is not yours. The battle is mine. Even the thing that you are going through, you can say to the Lord, Lord, I submit under your authority. I need to be led by you. I want to hang on your faithfulness throughout my life, Lord. As I stand, given the condition that I'm in, and submitting under you. I do not want to fight. I want to keep silent so that you may be able to fight for me. And this beautiful day, I pray that the Lord continue to fight your battles. May you stand and be in a position which will allow the Lord to stand for you which will allow the Lord to rise up and be able to change every situation and every circumstance. May you be in that position where the Lord will destroy and pave a way for your life. In this beautiful day, I pray that it be so in Jesus' name. Until next time, God bless.